Brad, last night you said this was a very taxing squad to pick. What, what areas taxed you the most? It's demanding because you've got quality people and quality players that you have to tell are not in the squad. It's a hell of a lot better that way than the other way when you're trying to find players. So oh, we're in a healthy situation that we've, that's been some depth developed and I think the New Zealand Murray uh, campaign was very good. Well, we've had two specialist wingers who have played in the first two, <coughs> first two test matches of this Steinlager series and we've, we think they're the two best specialist wingers in the country. And we've picked other players who can play there like Rennie Ranger and, and Richard Kahui. Does Joe still have the top end speed to match the likes of uh, Havana and Athlon? Yeah. What makes you say yeah. Well, he's the quickest in our squad. So if he hasn't got it, then no one else has got it. That's true, the Yeah. Yeah, he's quick. Corey Jones is a fullback normally. We look at him as a right winger for the All Blacks, and he's playing particularly well there. I think you could probably say, as an All Black, he's a specialist wing. And we've got two other guys who are playing fullback, and it's great to see Mills play so well. Obviously, Israel Dag had a big test match in his first test at fullback. He's an interesting prospect, I think. Uh, he touched the ball twice and made two line breaks from it and uh, made six tackles, and they were pretty good ones. You know, he's, he's, so he's, uh, he's strong, he's, he's got a bit of X factor, needs some development, and uh, so he's an interesting prospect. I think Richard Cowley's played particularly well, whether it's been on the wing or centre or second. Um, for us, I think he's, he's gone really well. Conrad never thought he's injured, so which is a good way to be, but he was. <coughs> so he, he's good, and, and Israel, I think he just needed some space, and I don't think it's the right policy to throw those guys out too quickly after those, those head knocks. In his case, he got a pretty bad one, I think. He passed all the tests, but he was pretty chirpy the last couple of days, so... Uh, he's back on track. We're, we're looking at John O'Fowler as a player who can play in the three front row positions. The same versatility he gives us, if he can, if he can nail this job, he gives the blues. So there's no need for him to leave there at all. But John's played at probably at tight head, which is the hardest position of the three, mm-hmm. outside of the throwing. We've just got to establish whether he can throw uh, at this highest level. The Rebel Super 15 uh, is going to be an extended competition. And uh, you know, it, straight away, if you've got someone that can play one, two, and three, it becomes very, very valuable. How the rules have changed this year has changed your thinking on a specialist number seven backup. The game's become more of a continuity game for the seven, and uh, as opposed to make the tackle get up and punch the ball, that's not happening as much. And I think Kieran Reid is probably the best seven cover in the group. Um, I think he's got the skill set to play seven better than the other, perhaps better than the other loose forwards outside of Richie. Oh, he's, he's unlucky. Oh, he's, but he, he played very well um, for the Murray and the Grand England. Um, it's just that you can't pick them all. And I, like, I feel for him because he's played some exceptional football. On Super 14 form that Joe Rocks and Corey Jane were our two specialist wingers. They played in the first two test matches and played exceptionally well. And um, tough decision, tough on Jose, good, very good football to play very well last game.